halftime. Let's call it that. Zero to one at the Stadio Olimpico. I'll take it. Much to play for, of course. I think that this match got painted as Roma were fully in control. Milan totally outplayed at the San Siro. I think that's half true. I do think that Milan had their opportunities. I think that they ought to have drawn this match. I think it should have been 1-1 at the very end of it. Giroud should have scored. I was just looking at the XG of that shot. It was about 0.4. But consider that Giroud is one of the best marksmen in the game, even at the age of, what, 38 years old? He should have put that one away. That was uncharacteristic of him to miss out on scoring that. Also, Milan hit the crossbar, I think. Svilar came up several on several occasions with top-class saves. Offensively, Milan, I think, lacked that decisive edge to really get ahead. But you, I could just as well take that back, back to that Giroud opportunity. But Roma, I do think that they were all over them, especially in the first half. If we look back to those chances, Roma easily could have been up three, four goals at one point to zero. At the San Siro, that's a remarkable feat. One thing that caught me off guard, though, is how quiet the Milan fans are, how quiet the San Siro is. You hear about these ultras of Inter and uh, Milan, right? But today, and, and sometimes they do have brilliant choreography, whether it's the snake of Inter or uh, the devil of Milan, right? They do on these, they make these really good shows. But what is that worth? If throughout the entire match, you're not supporting your team, you're not out cheering the visitor fans because Roma's Tifosi were so loud today. Yeah, 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 come on. In my, in my TV, it was the only thing that was audible. It sounded so quiet. Roma completely took the wind out of Milan's sails during this match. And to me, that's kind of like the biggest storyline is the Giallo Rossi came in. Daniele De Rossi got this match perfectly correct tactically. And he should have been repaid with a few more goals. And Milan were completely deflated at home at the historic San Siro, which was made to sound like a library. Guys, I'm Wayne Gerard. We're going to be breaking this down. Milan Roma, 0 1, um, the first leg of the quarterfinals here uh, in the Europa League. Let's take a look as well at some other. My hair's a complete mess. Oh my gosh. Guys, thank you for joining um, at this late time. I look like I got electrocuted. I don't know what's going on with me, but um, what do we got here? Let's take a look. Okay, so overwhelming result in Liverpool with Atalanta winning by three goals. Another one, Benfica, Marseille. I think Benfica are, if Liverpool gets knocked out, for me, Benfica, are the favorites of this tournament. I think they have the pedigree. I think it's been a long time since a Portuguese team has won some silverware. They continuously produce unmatched talent. What else? Leverkusen, Chapi Alonso. Wow, nice win over West Ham at home in Germany. And these are the remaining teams. It's just it's just these... Uh, wait, no, there's got to be two more. Who are we missing out on here? Milan, Roma, Benfica, Marseille, Liverpool, Atalanta. And who are the other two? that I'm not catching here. Am I losing my mind? Marseille, Benfica, Atlanta, Liverpool. Okay, West Ham, Leverkusen, Milan, Roma. Good, this is your final eight. So for me, yeah, it's it's Benfica. If Liverpool goes out behind them, mm, I would say maybe Leverkusen, right? One of the best teams statistically in the world right now. I still don't think that they've lost in Germany. And I would say Roma are the fourth, fourth best team in this competition. Do you agree with that? Mm. Interesting take, I, I guess, there from myself. But nice to see you guys. Vincent came on in. Ben's here. Daye, clean sheet at the San Siro. Unreal. Yeah, great call. Also, Narf. Because Liverpool getting knocked out opens everything for us. Not just yet. I do think that Liverpool have the firepower to overturn that result. Uh, I want to take a look at Liverpool's schedule. Let's say in the past 10 matches. Let's go over that, and I'm just curious here if we could look through it and see what they've been up to. Two goals. Well, two goals in the last match against United, three before that, two before that, uh, three that they put past Manchester United, although they lost that in the FA Cup, but then six versus Sp Sparta Prague. So this is a team that can produce goals. In the first leg of that match, five goals against Manchester City, a goal. So uh, Southampton, three. 
anything else? Yeah, four. So this is a team who puts up numbers thinking that I wouldn't agree that this team is completely out. I think that they do have the manpower to go ahead. Let's take a look at, I want to see like their their highest goal scorers and stuff like that. Liverpool, yeah, Salah, of course, right? Darwin Nunez, Luis Diaz, uh, McAllister. I wouldn't call him a goal scorer, but he's a, he's a good center midfielder. Sobo Zlai, who you might remember when Roma played Red Bull Salzburg two years ago. And at that time, he was looking like a prospect. He was regarded, and Liverpool are the ones who made the uh, the effort to get him. And now that looks like to be lurking out, uh, working out for them. Who hasn't worked out for them, though? Gakpo. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that he's been anything like what we saw uh, in the World Cup. World Cup, yeah. Also, Ryan Gravenberch. Gravenberch from Ajax, from their youth system. I thought, well, he's still only 21. But two years ago, when Roma played Ajax, I could have swore that this kid was going to light it up. I think if he came to Italy, he'd be one of the best midfielders in the league. Uh, looks like, just given the title of that YouTube there, back in Liverpool training, that he must have gotten seriously hurt. But for me, yeah, he's a he's a real quality midfielder and expect more to come from Gravenberch as uh, time goes on. Um, I think we can hit a couple different topics. We're going to get to the De Rossi interview. We're going to also take a look, of course, at the starting lineup. We'll go through the plays of this match. Vincent's in here. He says, no way. Leverkusen's first, second Roma, third Benfica if Liverpool are out. Okay, okay. Also, Roma, Skamaka needs to be the Azzurri starter. I was wondering this as well, and I'm going to write this in a banner. Skamaka or a Tegui, who is your guy? Now, perhaps this is a, a, a question of the moment, right? Skamaka just had a great game against Liverpool, but I saw Rategui score for international duty. In fact, it seems like every time he plays, he scores for Italy. My take on this is you drop Raspadori. I'm not so sure that I see his value at the moment, especially with Pellegrini hitting form. And there's also Orsolini. There is Zaniolo as well, who when it comes to right wingers, is probably better. I would even think Chiesa is uh, is a more quality player than Raspadori at the moment. The way that Spalletti was playing with Raspa was as this false nine. What I saw against Ecuador, it didn't work at all. In fact, I think it, it was just like a terrible setup that Raspadori could not play the false nine. He doesn't have that game about him. Is he a um, is he a good number ten? Yeah, but he needs a center forward. He's not a guy you put in place of a center forward. That doesn't work at all. So for me, to answer this question right here, it's both of them. You have them interchanging. You have your good substitution. If uh, I was I was watching some World Cup 2006 videos, and I recalled that as I watched, I was like, oh, yeah, Vincenzo Iaquinto was in that squad. And he was quite similar, though a little bit different than Luca Toni. Luca Toni um, won the most goals in Europe, I believe, following that tournament when he went to Bayern Munich. And he was, of course, unbelievable. I think Luca was still at Palermo at that time. Maybe, maybe Fiorentina. Somebody might, might want to fact check me. Where was Luca Tony in 2006? But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, let's go back to, um, we'll keep hitting these comments. I see Rocco's in, Ruggie's in. Yes, big win, big win. What's up, my friend? Rocco says he doesn't trust him with Italy yet. Great form, but not sure he's ruthless enough for Italy. One thing that I will say, though, he does seem to have that little bit of like X factor, almost like that Balotelli-ish where he could pull a rabbit out of a hat when he needs to become decisive. Maybe not like somebody you always rely on. I agree with Rocco in that he hasn't proven that yet. I think Rategui on the international stage has proven he's the guy. The one thing which concerns me about Scamacca is what Spalletti said. He said he did he, when he came to train, he didn't really give his all. And Italy is not that place that you're going to do that. You're not going to come here and just go on your phone and go on TikTok and PlayStation and that type of stuff. So you're going to come here and you're going to train. So I respect that out of Spalletti. Uh, but for me, I do think that Scamacca deserves another shot. Like I said, he's got that X factor about him. He's also a little bit of a bad boy. And I like players like that there's a difference between professionalism and having an edge, right? We'll get back to that, I guess, at a later time. Ben says, he thought we played really well. 
Uh, Roma really took it to Milan multiple times, a few better touches in the box, and it's looking like 0-2 or 0-3 Roma. Yeah, for sure. I also want to shout out, uh, we're going to get to the starting formation now. I think we can swing over there. What do we got? Here we go. Share this tab instead. Yes, talking to myself. 25 shots by Milan. We're going to dissect that a little further. I think if you look at that stat on its face, you're like, oh, yeah, they dominated. No, no, Milan did not dominate because I want to look at the quality of those shots. Any news after Semper Milan? I wonder what they have to say. Actually, I wonder if they were upset or if they were like, nah, just bad luck. Uh, the lineups, let's get into it. Let's go to Milan first. Mignon in net was pretty good. Calabria, Gabia, Theo, and Hernandez. Theo Hernandez. I was watching his brother for PSG yesterday. That was a really good game. And the day before that, City. Who did City play? <laughs> Real Madrid. My mind gets a little fried. Uh, City versus Real Madrid was one of the best games I've seen in since the last time those two teams played. Midfield, Ben Acer returns. Reinders back. Their uh, three, their trident. I guess not tried it, but the um, attacking players here, Pulisic, Loftus-Cheek, Leao, and Giroud. You could say it wasn't a good game for Leao. And this comes off the back of some criticism by ex-Roma. Is he a legend? I don't know. One of the most talented players to never really stake his claim for the international team. Antonio Cassano had a lot of criticism for Leao. I don't think it was really deserved. But it's ironic that it comes before this match where Leao had a stinker of a match. And Giroud is the starting number nine. Over to Roma, 99, Svilard. Left to right, Spinazzola, Mancini, Smalling, Selic. We see Chris with his first start in a fortnight. And Gianluca Mancini is having a great run of form. Two goals in five days, the Derby. And of course, today, Pellegrini, Paredes, Cristante. I don't want to repeat myself, but we know that Pellegrini plays as the more attacking of these three. And then it's, of course, Dybala, Lukaku, and El Sharwi, who uncharacteristically starts out on the right wing. Now, let's take a look at what Fatmob had to say for this match. Let's go up here. Some player ratings. Teo Hernandez, 6'9". That's the Calabria, actually, with a really good rating, 7.3. That's surprising. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure how they got that. Reinders, highest of Milan with a 7-7. Everyone else, average. Over at Roma, though, Selic, 7-4. El Sharwi, 7-9. Dybala, an 8. He's going to be the highest on, um, excuse me, Mancini is the highest field player. Svilard is the man of the match. And this is according, once again, to Fatmob. Chris Smalling and Cristante says average. Lukaku, average. I, I guess that was that was pretty fair. I guess, you know, you're talking about 0.2 of a difference between going in green versus the orange, which says average. Tammy gets uh, some time. Balve slotted in towards the end just to kill off and provide some extra energy. Oddly was there. He got a shot. Okafor and Chukvezi, who probably should have had an assist here. You could see the momentum, though. I like this. Uh, this grid here, I think, is pretty fun. And let me make this a little bigger for you guys. There we go. So if we look closer into this, the yellow is Roma. Roma score. And then Milan reply with added pressure following until halftime. And then Roma seemed to take a little bit more control of the game before going into a much more significantly defensive approach here. And then it's all Milan, right? So this is actually momentum. It's a cool chart. I haven't seen this before this year. I do quite like it, though. Um, Patrick, who is often on this show, he sent me a good stat before as well. 30 clearances by Roma. But let's look at the first half. And if we look at the red, that's Milan. I don't know why the player's not showing up. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's on top there. And if you look at um, the XG, which is if you look towards the right of this box and up, you can see it says 0 .03. So it gives you the XG from every shot. So this is the only the first half. I mean, these, these this is nothing. 0 0.06 is the biggest number I've seen so far. But let's go into the second half. And it's this one here. That's the Jeru miss, 0.38. That's it rated on, um, as far as expected goals. 
Baroma, not too much. 0. 0.001, nothing substantial. But if we look in the first half, let's replay that. Nothing crazy here. Still nothing crazy. But this is this is, I guess, where stats lie, right? In that um this header was only a 0.19 expected goal. So out of 20, it had a 20% chance according to this metric from where Mancini headed it of it actually going into the back of the net. But you and I know that really Roma had more quality chances than this is telling us. Roma did have some really good opportunities. El Sharwi saw his deflection almost go in, uh, and there's a bunch of others. And I think that should be a good segue to now. Well, look at that form for Milan. Jeez. Was that the was that their form coming into this? Milan's on fire. I, I did not realize that. Wow. Roma, much more shaky form um, all around. Jeez. But let's go. Yeah, let's go through uh, the play by play here and keep the comments coming in, guys. Thanks for joining me. We're going to keep on talking and chatting, hanging out. I'm going to replay this. Uh, I'm just looking at like the, the highlights online. But in the fourth minute, Pulisic, he's doing his thing. And he's much more loose than we have seen from most Milan players. I want to say it's a good, it's a good start in Serie A from Pulisic this season. But uh, back to the fourth minute, Dybala opens it up to Spinazzola, who plays it back to Dybala, who then puts in a chip ball, but it goes over the net. I believe the intended target was Lukaku for that. Lukaku, um, while he got that rating of average, Lukaku is about to do something, I think in... When is it? It's probably like the, we'll get to it because I'm watching the highlights as I'm narrating, but he makes that double block. Rain Dares gets a shot on goal in the ninth minute, which is uh, deflected out for a throw in by Svilard. And then in the 16th minute, Svilard tries to play it out to Salik, who uh, then plays it up to Al Sharwi. And Al Sharwi puts Lukaku in on goal. And let's, what's Lukaku do with it here? He puts it into Al Sharwi, and that's the deflection which gets saved by Magnan. I think it might be that shot which gets uh which goes out for the corner kick, if I'm not incorrect. So where is this? Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me let's pull let's pull this up real quick here. I'm gonna share this. Now pay attention to your screen. I'm not gonna play it because that's copyright, but I can click through the slides. So Al Sharwi's gonna play this, right? It's there. It's right there. That's what they're calling for the offsides. You can see Theo putting his hand up and saying, hey, call that. Was he offsides? It's really hard to tell, but it looks like Gabia is keeping Lukaku on. If he's not, we're, we're like splitting hairs here. But that to me, probably Lukaku was on. Or else they would have, maybe they would have went back and I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to see it again and again, but um, that's it there. Anyway, I got to take you back to this though, because I'm going to play it as I narrate through. Okay, so that goes out for a uh, for a corner, right? And then we know Mancini heads it in. Sempre Mancini, sempre Dybala, who scores, uh, or I should say, passes it in from the corner. A beautiful corner, I have to say, right at the top of the six yard box. Kids, if you are learning how to take corners, that's exactly where you want it. Uh, De Rossi was into it. Pulisic then makes a give it, not a give and go, but a nice pass to Rangers at the top of the box in the 42nd minute, which is saved by Svilar. That was a great opportunity from them. Uh, then going into added time with three minutes added on in the 45th, that gets called there. And then to open up, the second half, what do we got here? We got a little saves from Svilar, and uh, there's cries for a penalty kick by Milan, not given. Then into the 57th minute, uh, Dybala receives it on the right flank, beats two men, takes it for himself, but it's a weak shot with his dominant foot with his left. You could, I can guarantee he wasn't too happy about that. Then another Roma opportunity, Lukaku plays it back to Pellegrini, who passed it into him, makes the run off of him, a little give and go wall pass there. Pellegrini puts it wide with his weak foot, with his left. 62nd minute layout, tries to get something going, 
but we could see the discipline of El Shadwi. Perhaps that's why De Rossi put El Shadwi on the right flank, and El Shadwi actually receives it back, then plays Lukaku in for a tremendous ball. Lukaku then plays it back to Pellegrini, but he's covered at that moment in time. Pellegrini plays into El Shadwi. El Shadwi plays it over to the right for Cristante, and Cristante um, shoots it probably about six yards wide, maybe five yards. But that was a really good play there, uh, manufactured completely by El Shadwi. I think, I, guys, we got to get El Shadwi kits. I think we got to get together and get on that bandwagon. I got to check some stuff on eBay soon. 68th minute. Um, Salik makes a pretty good block, goes out for a corner kick and keep those comments coming in. By the way, guys, throw a like up there as well. If you don't mind, I know I got, uh, our good, our good core here tonight, but sometimes people are passing by. You never know. Remember to subscribe glancing header off that corner. I think that's Calabria could be, could have been tail. Couldn't see from the back, but that was off of a corner kick. 72nd minute Leao uh, has the ball again sees his lob into the box deflected out by Pellegrini, but Milan maintain, maintain possession, which eventually falls to number 14. I think that's Reinders, who gets another shot on goal. Svilar dives nicely to his left. Ball goes back into play quickly. And um, number seven, I think that's oddly. I, I Actually, I like oddly. I think he's a talented player. He's got some good moves on him. Back towards 75th. Pulisic tries to open up something, oddly receives the ball, almost catches Svilar off uh, off his line here. I want to share this. Take a look at this slide here. So Svilar thinking that it's going to be a cross, but excellent positioning just in case that he gets caught out and he's able to drag across. Svilar is not the tallest keeper in the world. It's probably about 6'3", but he makes the block, covers his line, um, there's going to be a few more opportunities by Milan as this game continues, but I have to take you back to this as I continue to watch. Okay, so Svilar makes that block, and then in the 83rd minute, uh, I think that's Leao, or was he subbed out at that point? The left winger takes a, oh, it's yeah, it's Teo Hernandez, makes a good run, earns a corner kick, 83rd minute. Um, unable to beat Spinazzola, who did well defensively there. What else do we got? I think Patrick's texting me. Maybe he can jump on in. This corner kick saved, or I should say Svilar gets into it, and then is caught a little bit off of his line. A big shot out there by the Milan player, unable to tell who that was, but a decent opportunity. 87th minute, Milan starts another, I want to escapade. Escapade's not the right word. Another assault. <laughs> it's not an escapade against um, against Roma. And now we're talking about nine players in Roma's defensive third for Milan. So the pressure is very high. Chuck Wazy, this is where he makes his uh, great slaloming run. Takes two guys on, beats them, beats Mancini, plays it into G to, uh, Giroud. And uh, yeah, that's back at that 0.38 expected goal. And you would have bet your house on Giroud scoring that. Just texting Coach K. Sometimes Coach K comes in here. He texted me, huge win for Roma, 0-3. <laughs> there he is, yeah. Liverpool 0-3. That to me was the shocker of the night. Uh, nice to see you, Coach K. Um but back what I was saying before, I do think that Liverpool can come back. I think they have the firepower. I think Diaz is a great player. Darwin, I mean, uh, Gakpo as well. These are guys who can score. Atalanta is going to start to run a little bit thin. Uh, I think Atalanta on their day, they can stand up to anybody. They proved that today. Liverpool is one of the best teams in the world. However, perhaps the fatigue of the season can start to get to them. I think that's something which will develop. We'll, we'll well, we're, we will get our answer in uh, neck by next week. But let's take a look now at the press conference. A few quotes here off of Football Italia, what De Rossi had to say. He says, I thought for 60 to 70 minutes, the way we controlled the ball was really good. We were drawing them out and then creating spaces to run into. Exactly. So once you got these Milan players on the run, I think you can see where 
it's so funny. It's so ironic to say this. Pioli has had this team for years. De Rossi has had it for just a few months. But tactically, I would say Roma were the better, better team. He continues. He says, I think it was Romelu's best performance since I have been here. We tend to judge strikers and whether they score goals, but he fought hard, held up the ball, did everything I want to see from him. So I don't think I mentioned it in the play-by-play -play here, but um, Lukaku's double block off that shot right after Roma went up 1-0 is worth as much as a goal. So like he says here, we often just judge strikers by their goal tally, but what a player like Lukaku, and he specifically offers you, is a big body in the box to defend off corners, but also somebody who at times will work for the team. Then uh, speaking how El Sharwi is a former Milan player and De Rossi's ex-teammate, he says Milan have strength down the left, which has allowed them to dominate games in recent years. So it felt right to make changes. He says, we usually have Paolo Dybala there, but Cristante helped too and was always ready to double up on Reinders. You want players who are open to different things, who don't get pig-headed about certain roles. When I told El Shardoui I wanted him on the right, his body language was immediately positive. I knew he'd do well. Body language. And for coaches, this really does make a difference. I'm really glad that uh, I'm going to take myself I'm going to zoom in here for a second. I'm glad that Drossi mentioned this because body language, when your coach gives you instruction, it's not, it's not against your ego. It's not, it's not never punishment. It's what needs to be done at the time in order to win games. If you can put your ego aside as a player, as a professional, as a high school player, whatever, that is so beneficial and such a good component of your character where you, everyone will be better off. Because if you, you, I need to use the right words here and not curse. If you, if you are, um, if you take that and you don't complain and you just do what is being asked of you and required for your team, that's what makes you a leader. It's not what you say. It is how you act and what you actually do by your output for the team. So Al Sharli, put this into context, has been here for two tenures, years at this point, more than half a decade. What is it? Seven seasons El Shadoui's been with the team. He has to be considered a legend at this point. Somebody who puts that aside doesn't say, oh, I'm not going to play wing back. No, I'm not going to play right wing because we've seen him play both. Where's El Shadoui's best position? For him, he would probably say left wing. He would probably say close to the striker. So that is an excellent quality. Let's, um, let's go back to not too much longer in this press conference. He says, confidence makes a huge difference. You just see it in their body language and training on the pitch. Mentality, technique, and tactics are all connected in a chain. I told the players I had faith in them before this match. Mentality, technique, and tactics all connected in a chain. That's, that's really something. There's a lot of depth to that comment. Tactics, technique, mentality. I really like that from Derossi. If the players approach the match with the right mentality, then they're going to be more open to the tactics. If their tactics are ironed out, then they can profess their technique. That's just me trying to work that algorithm out. Um, like what's his name in the hangover where he's at the poker table and he sees like all the, the different algorithms in his head. I'm like, what is the Rossi trying to say here? Uh, he says, we got a, a few more paragraphs here, three more. He says, we had a few matches where we were a bit sluggish, sluggish against Lecce, but we got back to passing it around well. The approach against Lazio was the right one. People tend to think the stronger the opponents, the harder it is for you to see the ball. But in my view, it can be the opposite. Yesterday, I will say that Barca were probably the stronger team and had less of the ball. Uh, but back to the comments, he says, after the draw with Lecce, I told the players I would not accept, accept a single centimeter less than the attitude I saw in the derby. We cannot just raise our game for Lazio and Milan. If we don't see the same attitude against Udinese, that it means some players have not learned what it means to play football. I was upset after Lecce as we played really badly. This is a big advantage. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the editor speaking there. So to this point, attitude, raising your games for Lazio and Milan. And this is something like to go back to what I'm talking about, whether it's high school, college, pro ball. Often, especially with Roma, we tend to see there's this gap between elite teams and provincial teams, especially in Italy. This is a common phrase you use, provincial teams. 
And sometimes when I've spoken to other YouTubers like Giuseppe from Juventus, Gigi's Juve, he said like, you know, we don't really feel Roma the same way like we do Inter because Roma is still kind of like a province, kind of like, right? Because Roma floats in between depending on how they want to play, how they want to approach a match and their position in the league table. But if you want to be a great team and if you want to surpass that threshold, that glass ceiling, you have to approach every game like the way that De Rossi is saying, with attitude, with character, with having teams play up to you, not you playing to however they are, not you placating to them or, oh, this is an easier team. Eh, I'm not so into it tonight. You know, we'll give it a 90%, but 90% is never good enough. You got to go out there 100%, and that's hard. Why? Because seasons are long, because there's three competitions. You got Serie A, Coppa Italia, and um, European competition, if you're any decent side. All right, I'm going to go to the comments here. We got a lot. Thank you, guys. Skamaka, very lazy at times, says Vincent. Spalletti said he's not there for motivation, so it could be risky. Rocco, Roma and, B and Milan beat Leverkusen. It'll be a great semi, but Leverkusen hasn't really been tested. Bayern, a familiar opponent, can't really judge that. No shade, just see them losing versus Serie A. Mm. Boniface and Frimpong, two names. Speaking of um, links today, I did see Frimpong linked to Manchester United. Vincent says, Milan fans thought Lukaku was off sides in the buildup the, to the corner kick, but I don't think he was. I don't think he was. Selik owns Leao. Locked him up today. I was not, neither was I. I was not expecting that. Um, Spinazzola cooked Calabria a few times. I, I wouldn't have expected that either. But uh, Spinazzola has looked a lot better in, um, in since the Rossi has joined. I'm trying to get my little window back. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Rocco says, we risked a little when Chuck Wazy and Oddly came on, but overall great performance. Bruno's here. Says, I love Mourinho. But to say De Rossi is exposing so many issues that were holding us back. Haven't seen Roma play Milan with guts for years. Today's win seems so routine. We played like the favorite. Ten made a good core, yeah, that's for sure. Bruno also says, so Brighton could win the Scudetto and get slapped 4-0 by Roma. Atalanta slaps Liverpool 3-0 at Anfield. Premier math isn't mathing. <laughs> yes, Coach K. Huge win. This is a huge win. Um, kind of playing off, I think, Bruno's comment. Like, hey, this is Europe. This isn't Syria. It's important to remember that. And the approach that the energy should have been different. And I think it was a little bit to, uh, bit different today. Lino, thank you. I appreciate that, my friend. Vincent says, Derossi's opinion on Lukaku's performance just shows how well Derossi reads the game. A testament for sure. Yes. Please, guys, especially if you're passing by. Um, like I said, we've got our good core. We need to keep we need to keep it going. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Lena says, I think DDR is is what? Is him? <laughs> is the guy? The right guy? Rocco says, if Roma get Champions League next season, keep the Rossi and bring in some more key signings. I'm excited for what Roma can do in Europe. And of course, the league question here. Who? is the one player you would sign this summer. I'm hoping Roma has a little bit of mobility. I don't think it's going to be like Papundi. To me, that's the that's Baldanzi. No one's going to come in at a right wing. Dybala hopefully gets re-signed. It's got to be a left winger for me. Has to be. Maybe even a striker. Don't forget Lukaku is not in Roma permanently. He's on loan. Abraham, let's see. I don't know. Chelsea need a striker. Nicholas Jackson's not the answer. Tammy, of course, is from Chelsea, has deep-rooted ties to that club. Uh, Austin Villa will probably be looking to strengthen up. So the top the top seven in England is going to get stronger. Let's see what happens there. Uh, I don't think that the striker role is certain for Roma. Just looking more at the comments here again. Vincent says, or sorry, Lino says, sorry, I think that De Rossi is making Mourinho look like an amateur. Prior to De Rossi, Roma needed a new defense, a new goalkeeper, no right backs. Not the case. It did look a lot. It did look dire. And Diago Pinto's job, it looked like he did an awful job. But in fact, what we see is, is much more. 
it seemed like we needed something new. And I think that I wanted to hold on for Mourinho as long as possible. Why? Because he was still employed as Roma's coach. In fact, he actually is still on contract and would have to show up if, if they decided to sack uh, De Rossi like tomorrow. It, I think it, it hurt me. It hurt me that Mourinho was was bad. It hurts to say, but he was bad. Um, I hear my wife in the background saying, old and was a has-been. I think the game has surpassed Mourinho. Does tournament-style football work still? It does. It works in tournaments. It worked for Italy in um, in many occasions throughout the country's history. Catenaccio is a type of style, which means chain, literally. It's not about just being defensive. It's about like a chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it going up that chain very quickly. Um, but there's new coaches. There's Chabi Alonso, who played under Ancelotti, Mourinho, Guardiola, right? Did Chabi play under Guardiola? I can't remember now. Uh, maybe at Bayern, I think he did, right? I think he's the next big manager. De Rossi is definitely in that mix. Who else? Thiago Mota will be there. There's Coach K told me about somebody. Uh, oh, I just Amarin, right? Amarin from Benfica. That seems to be a coach who's on the up. I don't think I don't think Luis Enrique is a good coach. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I'm still scarred by his time at Roma and what I saw yesterday, getting beaten by his own team. Vincenzo Italiano is a good coach. He's a good Serie A coach. Much more than that, I'm, I'm not too sure. Amarim from Sporting. That's right, from Sporting Lisbon. And what are, what are they up to? Sporting Lisbon is first in Portugal. 71 points, four clear of Benfica. 23 wins, only two losses and two draws on the season. That's that's crazy. So we've got Amorim. Who else is uh, is in the mix there? I think that Newcastle's manager is probably due for Eddie Howe, is definitely due for a big club. I think you could see Arn Slot from Feyenoord make the jump. Uh, who's first in the Dutch league? Is it PSV? It's got to be. PSV is in first by nine points over Feyenoord. I don't know their coach. PSV manager. Peter Bos, 60 years old. Not to hate, but at that age, you're, you're probably not. I don't know. You, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's see what else. Could Roma get Chiesa? Mm. I would love Chiesa. I think he's a phenomenal player. What he's done for Italy, if Chiesa doesn't have that performance, Italy doesn't win the last Euro competition. Roma needs striker uh, and wingers more than anything. Another center attacking mid would be great. Would love Juan Bissaka. Juan Bissaka not doing good at Manchester United right now. Would he be able to survive in Serie A? Probably. We see English players come over here and do quite well. Uh, Tamori is one of the best center backs in in Serie A, Chris Smalling, yeah, one of the best center backs. I know, of course, you know, I stall because I'm considering the injury fitness. On top of that, who else? Lookman, even though Lookman, I think, grew up in England, but but is Nigerian. I believe he plays for Nigeria, but I'm pretty sure he grew up in London. Um, so English players in the past four or five years have done really good out here. Loftus Cheek, good player. So maybe Juan Bissaka comes over and he's uh, up to snuff of Serie A, but the pace of the Premier League could be passing by him. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, uh, Tammy Dybala. That would be something, my friend. Spend is back. What's up, my friend? Hello, Brother Wayne. Yes. What's up, Alma? Sempre. Did at Bayern. Played for Klopp. Yeah, 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 right? Um, Xavi Alonso played for Klopp. Wow. I, I heard, I was listening to the TIFO podcast um, the other day. Uh, I was in Vermont. I was coming back. And they mentioned that Klopp was in Liverpool, I think, for nine years now. Can you believe that? That that time flew. 
I feel like Klopp was just killing it with Dortmund, and then it was a big deal. I feel like that was four years ago. It's crazy. Mourinho would be great with a smaller club, build up some younger players the way he blooded our academy. I think he'd be good with an international team. Rocco kind of echoing me there. I'd like Reandro uh, Trussard. Do you mean Trussard from Arsenal? Trussardi? I'm not too familiar with it. That's somebody else. Leandro Stuella from um, Gary O'Neill, another solid manager, Ben says, on the rise. Uh, what he's doing at Wolverhampton, coming in like three days before the season started, good call. And Ben said, if Roma has a great a blank check, Ruben Neves ASAP. Did Ruben Neves go out to Saudi Arabia? I got to Google that. Yeah, Al Hilal. Oof. He's probably getting paid $40 million a year. It's not a bad payday. I think uh, I think it's a good career opportunity. If they need any coaches, maybe Coach K and I can go out and take a second division team, make like 200 a year. That, that doesn't sound too bad to me. Yeah, I feel like if Mourinho went to um, what country? Maybe like a Norway under Holland. And there's a couple other players there. A Scandinavian team. Sorry, Sven. Um who else would be like a good shout? Not Brazil. Brazil needs to play with flair. They can't. That's not a team who needs to sit back. Plus, they have their own problems right now. They don't need Mourinho. Could he go to Portugal? Maybe, but Portugal's looking pretty good right now. Who else? The United States. Honestly, probably the United States could come in. And uh, yeah, that's so funny. Vincent just said it. He could come in and um, and really do... <laughs> And be just Hollywood. Imagine Mourinho coaching a match for the USA in Hollywood, speaking to the press. Like, what? Yeah, I think we got to put that out there. Uh, so I was thinking of, <laughs> it would just be absolute box office. Like, the way that he speaks to people, his comments, snarkiness, his honesty. But sometimes, you know what? Being honesty doesn't mean you're not being rude. And that would just get eaten up. He'd be on the cover of Goal.com every other day. It would be like CNN with Trump. <laughs> Did I go too far? Sorry. Um, Trussard. This is why I think... Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure what Arsenal's going to do. I'm seeing links for Leal. They've still got Martinelli, which plays left wing. There's Trussard, who's a really good winger in my opinion. I like him a lot. They're not going to be able to have all three. That's definitely not possible. But the NBA... <laughs> Portugal win a Euro playing defend and counter. So did Greece. Triano Stellas. Never forget that. Uh, and that's that's true too. Portugal won 2000. I got to do the math. 2022, 2018, right? Yeah, 2018, Ronaldo got hurt in the final and then like acted like he did it all on his own. And um, there was a there was a striker who came in for him who did pretty good. But that, that team did. 2016? Yeah? No, that's a World Cup year. Portugal? Euro gold. No, that's not what I need. Euro. Oh, it is 2016, but isn't that a World Cup year? I'm confused. 2020. No, you're right. You're right. And so is Google. Sorry to doubt you. Um, is that Rocco? But let's look at the Let's make one more um, discussion point here before we sign off. Let's go back to this. Let's say Atalanta go through, Benfica go through, Roma go through, Leverkusen go through. Who do you want if you're a Roma fan? Do you want Benfica? I don't want Atalanta. I never want them, not even in Serie A. Not that I'm not confident. I still take Roma over them. Lever Leverkusen to me is, I don't want them. I think they're different from last year. Let's, just for devil's advocate, let's look at what's going through them. I think Boniface, I'm going to look this up, who scored, who scored.com. Usually they're really quick with stats. So is Transfer Market. Boniface, 23-year-old, Nigerian international, 10 goals, 7 assists in the Bundesliga, 5 goals, 1 assist in Europa League, fits 15 goals, 8 assists, and two goals in the, I guess it's the German Cup, the Pokal, DFB Pokal. 
<laughs> 20, 23 years old. This kid's definitely going to the Premier League next season, right? And who lands him? It's not United. They, they've they invested heavily, and they're giving that time to Hoyland. Um, is it Arsenal? Does Gabriel Jesus make way? Does he go somewhere else? I don't know. I would like to see um, Ivan Tony go to Arsenal. I just think he's got that to use that word, that box officeness about him. I don't know, but Boniface is not going to be staying at Leverkusen. Maybe one more year because Chabi says he's staying one more year. But um, let's go back. Am I? Oh, I'm not. Here we go. Let's bring that up a little bit more for you. Okay. Beat Leverkusen. Beat West Ham. Beat Union Berlin. Dusseldorf, four goals past them. Beat Hoffenheim. Beat Freiburg. Karabag. Wolfsburg. When's the last time? Did this team not lose at all this season? They drew. That's their last match. Not winning was a draw in January 27 against Mönchengladbach. Before that, this team is ridiculous. 5-1. I don't know. I don't know these teams, though. Like These could be guys who are part-time bakers. I really... Dortmund. 1-1, December 3rd. 4-0, Union Berlin. Oh my gosh. Look at this team. They haven't lost. Leverkusen have not lost all season. Guys, that's it. That's, that's the team who's their number one. Patrick's interrupting my stream. Where'd we go? Where do we go? Where is it? Where's my stream? There we go. Sorry. <laughs> when Patrick called me on WhatsApp, I totally lost. Um, I got to put my phone on. Do not disturb. Patrick, jump in the stream if you want, but I'm signing off soon. Uh, do not disturb. How do we do that? There we go. Anyway. Um, yeah, 2016. To me, it's Leverkusen. That's the team I don't want Roma to face. They're the tournament favorites. What time is it? 9.53. I got I got a shower. Portugal didn't win a game in 90 minutes until the semis. Came third in the group. Spinazzola played a really good game today. Little competition from Angelino has little fire under him. Agreed. Good point. Lino says, I don't miss Mourinho drama at press conferences. Um, I was sad. <laughs> Sub, I guess like a... An alternative reason I was sad Mourinho left was because like I lost on Twitter like 250 followers, which was like I was like, oh no. And on YouTube too. I think I lost like 30, 35, 40 people. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> but but then I everything came back. So we're back. Leverkusen beat them again. Rocco says he wants Atalanta, Roma, a different team in Europe. An all Italian final. Clinch that fifth Champions League spot. Vincent says he's not afraid of anyone. Give us anyone. Rocco, not scared of Leverkusen. Um, Lino, so Italy can, with a win by Fiorentina and Atalanta not losing next week, Italy will secure a fifth Champions League spot. So at this time, where is Roma? Fifth, fifth position, right? Roma's in fifth. They would qualify for Champions League, and they are five points ahead of Atalanta. That's pretty cool. I, however, I still want that title. Uh, Leverkusen will be ended in the semis. Let's see. Leverkusen-Atalanta would be a smoking hot match. If you're on yeah, there we go. That's the stat. We're going to get the fifth spot. I'd love to see Frim, sign Frimpong from Leverkusen on right back. Yeah. To me, like... United are going to sign from Pong. I think that once I saw the link, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But that would have to be a big operation. I think we got to see what the new ownership from Manchester United want to do. They're going to have a bunch of new sporting directors talking to Coach K. And uh, Oh, Patrick's here. I'm sorry, Patrick. I didn't check anything. <laughs> Sorry, it, it, it's been like twenty minutes at this point. No. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's a point anymore on on, on you doing it. But whatever. I, got, I got in a roll. I was in a. 
what do you call it? I was in a um in a time warp, in a trance. What did you think? Tell me what you thought. I got five minutes. I, I, I think you need to learn to use uh, the, the, the the stream software so that you don't invite people over and don't open up the door <laughs> on the. You know. um, I was like, why is he calling me? <laughs> Sorry, tell me. Right. But what, what's the topic now? I think everything everything's covered by now, by now. So. Yeah. But what was your take? Were you happy? Were you satisfied? Did you think that? Was there more to it than just oh Roma dominated the match? No, well, I, I don't know if I, I, you, you saw the stats of, of the attacking play, and and it wasn't that that amazing to be honest. It, it's a bit more de defense based today. I mean, at, at least stats wise, I, I don't know. You you think we dominated and, and did great in, in the offensive side of the of the game as well? Or? Yeah, I, I thought tactically De Rossi got the best of Pioli, which is. Insane, shots, shots insane. Goal, like, numbers, shots and goals. Yeah, but I think like if you, especially if anyone joined this stream a little later, when you look at those shots on goal, they were they're a bit misleading. The XG says that the percentage of them going in was low, but what what I saw was that they were quality chances. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on, I think what I was about to say, and I, and I kind of agree with you in that Milan's chances, if they had a little bit of a better shooter, if they had a little bit of a better player. They would have gotten the better of that net, and I think that that let's not get carried away. And there's still a second leg here. Yes. Well, what, what's your score? What, what's your score for the second game? Second game, we're going in. It's going to be zero zero, maybe maybe one one, and Roma Roma advance. I do believe that they will. And they will face uh, what what team after? What what's your pick for the? You didn't want Atalanta. Um, I don't want Atalanta, but I don't want Leverkusen. I would take anybody, but I don't. I don't know though. Benfica, like the amount of talent on these Portuguese teams, you don't know what you're going to get. They're fast. Their scouting networks are the best. Just not Leverkusen. I think they're the tournament favorites. Right. See, I got Lino defending me. He says I was in the zone. Sorry. Maybe I need to do a better job yeah, communicating. He's, he's biased, probably. Right? <laughs> what do you think? Should I make this into a pin? A little Mancini holding the flag, the rat pin. I gotta, I gotta share that real quick. Yeah, you, you, you need to, you need to improve the merchandising side of the, of the channel. That, that, that might be a big sell, selling item, a big ticket item. It's probably. coming. It's coming. The pin is coming, Patrick. Let's see if I could show this real quick. Oh, there's a blocker in the way. Hold on one second. There we go. Decline. That's what we need. <laughs> That's that was class by Mancini. Look at that. There he is. Look at his face. Yeah, that, that that's perfect material for a for a pin if you can capture the <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe we'll sell that flag. Maybe we'll we'll do a uh a miniature, like a little desktop flag people can get. Topic is Mancio is a legend. Sven says, we should protect Mancini at all cost. What a player. And Ioannis is here. He says, couldn't watch the game, but looked at the highlights and read up on it a while ago. That Rossi played a great tactical game today. Um, I think that's the moral of the story. Patrick, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't see you in the waiting room, but... uh. And, and I also had to hear hear you defend Mourinho as well, so so it was it was pretty bad. I had to confess my love. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you had been quiet a couple of streams, so now it was time to bring that out bring that out there again, right? You know, I I had to I had to defend Mourinho as long as he was Roma's coach. I think that it would have been wrong for me to you know there's there's conversations you and I have, and then there's things like to say in public, and like I will never criticize the club that I love like publicly, right? Not through Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Like that's not, that's not what I want to do. So for me, it's like until that relationship is contractually finished and Rome have officially moved on to me, it's like, I don't want to almost like admit it. I don't want it to, maybe, maybe sometimes it gets in the way of better judgment and being honest. Uh, until but, um, the Mourinho sponsorship, Checks stop coming in, right? That, that's <laughs> important. The, the Mourinho Club sponsorship. 
that you yeah, had. Yeah, until the check stop cover stop coming in. Once those are gone, you can talk freely and, and openly. In the yeah, stuff. correct. Um, my, side note: I might get to meet Del Piero tomorrow in New York. You, you should you should ask him to come in on the channel. Yeah. So oh, Alex Del Piero, would you would you mind talking about Francesco Totti with me? Exactly. <laughs> and how good his career was. That's important. That, but, um, that would be a big hit with the, with the public, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind telling us about that penalty that uh, Totti scored against Australia in the, what is it, the quarterfinal of the 2006 World Cup? Um, but yeah, you know, I might get a chance to meet him tomorrow in New York. Um, I mentioned, and guys, um, commentating now for Chow TV USA, which broadcasts Del Piero's team, LA 10. And uh, it's been pretty cool so far. Um, Patrick, I'll send you a jersey. I know, you're, I know, you're anxiously awaiting it. And, and the red flag ping and ping as well, right? That, when, yeah. When that comes out, that's gonna come out soon, folks. I guess. <laughs> yeah, the flag. S sign up for that. There's gonna be a, a, a waiting list for all. Of yeah. No, I think that I think it would be a good idea, or a um, uh, like a little, I don't know, some type of sticker or something. We gotta, we gotta work on that. It's good, but the, the the flag was there today during the match. I don't know if you saw. No, I I, I can. I, I gotta pull it up. Hold on, real quick before we sign off. It was um. There it is. <laughs> there, there it is. All right. It made it all its way. It made it all the way to Milan. Maybe it's gonna be this weekend as well. Who, who are we playing next this weekend? Do you know? Uh, that's a that's a really good question. I think it's. Let's see real quick. Maybe I'll share this. What do we got going on? Uh, the season's ticking down, Patrick. Udinese uh, is next on Sunday at 12. Then it's back in Rome. Again, of course, the second leg. Bologna, April 22nd. Napoli, the 28th. Juventus, the week after. Atalanta, the, the following. Team after, right? Of course. Yeah. This is a tough schedule. I mean, Udinese stink, but Bologna, Milan, Napoli, Juventus, Atalanta, <laughs> and then Milan again for the last match day of the season. And, and you have Albert as, as well there. We should sign Albert. Roma, Roma should sign Albert. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how much that would be, but but it, yeah, it's probably within the the budget, right? Um. I wanted to yeah. send Diaz from Liverpool earlier. Well, yeah. Why don't you tell the folks here about that? No, uh, I think uh, I think Albert's going to go to Inter, to be honest with you. I think it makes sense. I think they have the money to do it. They don't spend a lot of money, but they're going to win Serie A. They um, are the best team in Serie A by far. Not Maybe not by far, but they're solidified as a Champions League team. If I was Albert, he's going to be 27. I mean... I could see it happening. You, you you didn't give your predicted score, I think. That was the, the common two, score. Let's go two zero. Let's play it. Play it easy. Two zero. Maybe three zero if we're gonna be nuts. But um what's your what's your score, Patrick? And then we'll wrap this up. Two one. Two goal scorers. Pellegrini and, and Mancini again. Mancini again, wow. Right. No. Let's see. Let's see how that works out. But um, hopefully, Dybala. because Dybala brace. Yeah, Maybe that, that, that's very brave. You're not surprising people there. I mean. <laughs> no, but, but um, I, I don't know about a brace. That's that's unlikely. But but it, it, it's it's more likely that Mancini Mancini scoring again. Right? So, so this is a really good comment here. The rat flag is now the new No Totti No Party banner. I think so. We gotta start. I gotta get on this. We gotta monetize this, Patrick. I, 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 think, so. I, think, I think it's gonna make a lot of money. I think sales are gonna be pretty good. <laughs> get um, your official uh, rat flag pin today, right? Thanks. Well, I'm gonna have the pin. Uh, let me see if I could show it while wow, we have. We got a nice little group in here right now. Let me see if um, where it is in my trash and if I could uh, pull it up real quick. If 
I could find it. I might have to wait until you, you, you're gonna pull it out of the trash. If, if it's in the trash, yeah. Right? Let's present this. I want to see what everyone has to think about this this uh, video file here. Die pin. Okay, so to, just to set the record before I pull this up and before I broadcast this item, um, there's still some editing to do. I have like a shot of me wearing the pin on a backpack, but I'll just let it play. <laughs> So the difference is, Patrick, is um, what you suggested is the voiceover. And I think um, I have the copy somewhere. It's in my editor. But um, I think that's that's what we'll do. Let me, where are you? There you are. I think that's what we can do. That's what I did going forward. But um, maybe the rat shirt would have been more popular. <laughs> no. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do some more editing probably tomorrow and take it from there. But I'm exhausted. I got to go shower. Right. And uh, next time let the guest in. Sorry. I'll make sure. That's a great time. I saw a bunch it's of private chats. The, the game, right? Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Patrick. Patrick. Bye, Cheers. guys. Ciao.